and welcome back. We're going through solutions on this mock exam. I'm at question 15 now and trying to move this camera view so you can see the whole thing. There we go. Solve the inequality and give, 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 give. You better doubly give your solution in this one. Solve the inequality and doubly give. Square it. <laughs> your solution in set builder notation as a graph on the real line or as intervals. So in this one you're given some leeway apparently. Uh, you can you can give it in, in any way. It's just solve it and please square give. Give squared your solution. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> There's a typo there in this. Obviously. So we'll just we'll say like question mark. Alright. Um, A. It's the absolute value of two x plus four is bigger than or equal to sixteen. Okay. So there's two possibilities here for absolute values. Possibility one is that 2x plus 4 is bigger than or equal to 16. So you, you plug some x in and you actually get a positive number in it and it's actually bigger than 16 or equal to. There's another option. 2x plus 4 is less than or equal to negative 16. All right, if you, if you plug in some x and you get some number less than or equal to negative 16, and then you take the absolute value, right, if this left side is like negative 18, that's less than or equal to negative 16. When you take the absolute value, the negative signs are erased, they're forgotten. So then it becomes 18, and 18 is definitely bigger than or equal to 16. So there's these two possibilities, and this is just coming from the definition of absolute value. Okay, it's remember the absolute value of x is equal to two possibilities, negative x or x. The top one is if x is negative. The second one is if it's non-negative. That's just the definition of absolute value. So we're just applying that here. All right, so let's solve number one. Um, we've got to subtract the four. Two x is greater than or equal to 12. Next, we'll divide by the two. That We're not dividing by any negatives here, so we're just keeping the inequality in the same direction. Okay, so x is bigger than or equal to 6. Anything bigger than or equal to 6 will give us a true statement here, which means a true statement here. Okay. Or, option 2, 2x plus 4 is less than or equal to negative 16, so we're going to do the same, same thing. Subtract 4. Divide by 2. We don't need to flip the direction of the inequality because we're not dividing by a negative. X is less than or equal to negative 10. So there we have it. Uh, there we, that, that's it. We are not quite in set builder notation. We're close. But once we have this, we're good. So let's, let's do the three different solutions here. So in set builder notation, it's the set of all X such that x is bigger than or equal to 6 or x is less than or equal to negative 10. That's it. Set builder notation. There we go. Throw it over here for this, this video. Okay. Okay, and so the why is it or? It's because um, we're looking for anything that that makes this statement true, right? Anything. So, so long as it makes this 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 line in absolute value bigger than sixteen, we're good. We've got two possibilities here. We've got either this set or this set. 
Okay, that set or that set. Make it true. They don't both simultaneously work. Right? They, they don't overlap here. So we're looking at an or statement here, not an and. Okay, how about in interval notation? Well, I'm going to translate these in reverse order here, actually. So x is less than or equal to 10 is this, negative infinity to negative 10, inclusive, together with, or, 6 to infinity. That's the interval notation solution uh, here. And then the last option is just the real line, graph on a real line. Again, you, you don't have to provide all the solutions. I'm just providing them all here. So we've got negative 10. We've got 6. 0 is obviously somewhere in between. So what do we do? We shade a closed circle at 10, negative 10. And then we go over here, and we do this sort of deal. We do a closed circle at 6. We shade over here, and we do that sort of deal. And that's it. So any one of these three will work. All right, next problem is 15b. Again, we're just solving and giving the answer in one of the three notations there. 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to x minus 2. We're going to try and isolate the x's. So let's bring all the constants to the right side and bring all the x's to the left side. So 2x minus x is just x. We'll subtract that x to the left side. And then we'll add 1 to the other side. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And that's it. That, that. If we throw this here with a couple curly braces, we're good. The set of all x such that x is less than or equal to 1, uh, negative 1, that's it. We subtracted that x over. That gave us the x. We added the 1. That gave us the negative 1. <laughs> it's, it's that easy. As an interval, it is negative infinity to negative 1 inclusive. As a graph on the real number line, here's negative 1. We close the circle there, and we go to the negative infinity direction. That's it. Okay. Number 16, I'm going to go ahead and do this one as well. It's it's smashed at the bottom of the screen, but uh, it doesn't, won't take that much space. So find the x and the y-intercepts of the graph of the equation y equals x squared minus 7x plus 6. So I notice, first off, that this thing factors. So I'm going to factor that. x minus 6, x minus 1 it'll be clear why I'm doing that in just a second. So how do we find the x and the y-intercepts of any function? Well, the x-intercepts, so I'm gonna, the x-intercepts always have you know, some x value, but a height of zero. That's always true. The y-intercepts, they have some y value, but they always have a zero x value. If you think about the graph of a function, it crosses the x-axis at a height of zero. It's always at a height of zero. So that's that's why this zero is, is here for the x-intercepts. For the y-intercept, it always crosses right above x equals 0, or right below x equals 0. That's why this 0 is here for the y-intercept. When you're given a formula for a, a function, these are actually instructions to find the intercepts. Let's find the y-intercept first. What do we do for the y-intercept? We plug in 0 for x. So y equals 0 squared minus 7 times 0 plus 6. So what is the y-intercept? 0, 6. 
done. Okay, to find y-intercepts, just plug in 0 for x, and you've got it. To find x-intercepts, you plug in 0 for y. So that's why I factored this before. When you plug in 0 for y, what do we get? We get 0 equals the factored form, x minus 6, x minus 1. Okay, that's a little easier to solve than the original one because now we know each of these factors can be zero in order to make a true statement. So what do we get? We get x equals six for this first one or one for the second one. And that gives us our two x-intercepts. We've got six, zero, and we've got one. 0. Those are our two x-intercepts. That's it. So for the next video, we'll, we'll uh, be going through a few more questions. Uh, and let's get, we'll, I'll, I'll get right on to that. So I hope this one helped if you had any questions on these.